taking a criticism on Dante's part. Uh, the next, Terzina, um, uh, really um, uh, geographically describes all the strifes and struggles, uh, political struggles in Italy from the coasts, Lituania Marina to inland. Uh, there is no part uh, that is not uh, involved in the political struggle. Um, and uh, this part uh, um, ends with a rhetorical question whose answer, as we all know, uh, is clear to Dante, it is clear to us what use are Justinian's laws when there is no one to enforce them. Uh, and uh, this part will take us to the next two terzina of the invective uh, in the apostrophe to the church and its representatives. Um, mostly to those who hold power, like popes uh, and the cardinals. Um, and you will remember that uh, Dante uh, already in hell has encountered um, among the avaricious, among the simonists, of course, among the hypocrites. Hell was overpopulated, if you will, by the church members, by the representatives of the clergy. Uh, so um, uh, he takes aim here at um, uh, those within the church who hold the power. Uh, gente che dovrebbe essere devota e lasciar seder Cesare in la sella. Uh, and this is um, uh, very clear to everyone uh, who uh, understands uh, even the basics of Dante's, uh, Dante's biography. Uh, Instead of dedicating, the, dedicating their attention to the matters of the Holy Spirit, the popes, as Dante so clearly exposes in Inferno 9, ter, uh, 19, pardon me, turn their attention to the gold and silver. The leitmotif of the entire third bulge of the eighth circle is gold and silver. Fatto avete Dio d'oro e d'argento, says Dante. Uh, when talking to Pope Nicholas III uh, in his harsh invective against the popes uh, who sell um, uh, the church um, things uh, and the, the matters of the, and the things of the Holy Spirit for, for money and for functions. Um, and because of that, because they have uh, uh, made idols of uh, gold and silver, La vostra avarizia il mondo attrista, uh, says Dante in verse 104 of Inferno 19. Um, ever since Sylvester I, uh, the Pope, um, pr after presumably curing the Emperor Constantine from leprosy, accepted material goods in return and thus became il primo rico patre, again, uh, Inferno 19, the Popes have preferred the riches to the vows of poverty that they took. With the riches came the desire for secular power and the decadence ruled within the church and within the world. This kind of attitude then led to the Sella Vota that we've uh, seen uh, before, uh, just uh, a few moments ago, and to the imbalance of power that is detrimental to both the secular world and the spiritual well-being of the Christians. So because this gente che dovrebbe essere devota does not follow the holy words of the saints and Christ himself, they render the tragic political situation even more tragic and make of Italy esta fiera from the second tercet here, a wild animal that is not being corrected by the spurs. And the spurs uh, is the metaphor, in this metaphor are Justinian laws uh, that should be in the emperor's hands. Therefore, the church, by openly seeking secular power and opposing emperors, contributes to the lawless infighting instead of fulfilling its spiritual vows. Uh, and um, this is um, uh, just part of Purgatorio 16, which is at the center not only of Purgatorio, but all, also the, divine, the entire Divine Comedy. Purgatorio 16 is the 50th canto in, uh, out of 100 canti uh, in the Commedia. It talks about uh, the free will uh, and ties into, which is the concept uh, upon which rests the entire possibility of this world that Dante is describing. Um, and uh, with this uh, uh, ethical concept of uh, libero arbitrio, Dante ties the political one, which is the necessity of the empire uh, and its laws to guide um, uh, the souls um, uh, in a way that is independent from the church in the secular world. 
Um, so uh, this is the part where um, uh, uh, Dante will talk uh, about the theory of the two sons, the Pope and the Emperor, like uh, who uh, should um, govern the world in uh, two different ways, complementary to one another. Uh, but as uh, Marco Lombardo says here in the penultimate uh, the terzina on, the, uh, on your slides, Dio oggi mai che la Chiesa di Roma per confondere in sé due reggimenti cade nel fango e se brutta è la soma. Uh, so this, this is the world, this is the situation that Dante is uh, criticizing uh, in these two uh, terzine of uh, Purgatorio VI. Um, he will go on to criticize the emperor himself, uh, Al uh, Al um, Albert I of Austria, who was not crowned in Rome uh, for six de decades or so after Frederick II, uh, no emperors were crowned in Rome, uh, and Dante is criticizing this lack of interest on the part of the emperors in the southern lands uh, in these um, uh, in these verses. So it is, it is not necessarily exclusively the fault of the Pope, it is also the fault of the Emperor, uh, the goings on uh, that are um, uh, uh, happening. Um, oh, and I'm sorry. Uh, this is, um, uh, I, I'm talking about, um, I'm sorry. These two, uh, these two terzine, and I wanted also to um, introduce here um, uh, before before going on to the emperor uh, verses from Paradiso twenty seven and Peter's anger at the situation in the church and what the popes have done uh, uh, of uh, of his place, quelli cusurpa in terra il luogo mio, Boniface VIII, of course, that uh, Dante is criticizing, and this is St. Peter's anger because of the situation uh, uh, in the church, probably the, the most forceful invective against the, uh, the church as an institution and the Pope uh, in, um, uh, in the entire uh, commedia. Um, so, Alberto Tedesco, um, as I said, he's also criticizing uh, the uh, the emperor for for the situation um, and, uh, uh, that he's describing here. Um, and um, here, at this, in the central um, third set of the uh, of the quotation, uh, talking about Montecchi and Capelletti, the uh, rivalries between and the fight, fighting between Montecchi and Capelletti in Verona and Cremona. Uh, he descends further uh, in the next verse to Monaldi and Filippeschi in Orvieto uh, about the Guelph uh, and Ghibellin uh, struggle within one city in direct reference to verse 84 that we've seen before when he says, e l'un l'altro si rode di quel cun muro e una fossa sterra. So he's going from regional, um, uh, from criticizing regional rivalries uh, to um, uh, rivalries within the same um, uh, uh, city walls here in Orvieto, in other words, to say, to describe uh, how how uh, the political, senseless pol political struggles permeate uh, the entire territory of Italy. He arrives to Rome uh, uh, that cries for its Caesar in the penultimate uh, uh, line here. Um, so the next, the fourth part of the invective uh, will be turned to God uh, because it almost looks like uh, as if Dante has lost all of his hope, uh, and uh, he's uh, in uh, in the representatives uh, of the earthly powers. Uh, so he turns to God uh, because no one else listens, uh, and uh, asks almost helplessly, "Are your are your are your eyes turned elsewhere?" Uh, sono gli giusti occhi tuoi rivolti altrove. 
uh, or is this, uh, or does it all make some sense that will be revealed to us uh, at another point in time? And finally, uh, and very briefly, because uh, I see our time is running out, uh, the final accusation and the, probably the most personal one is um, uh, levied against Florence. Uh, and it begins with uh, Fiorenza Mia, of course, in a, that ironic sorriso that we talked about yesterday, uh, because uh, normally the uh, possessive adjective Mia or Mio is reserved uh, for those uh, for whom Dante has affection, like uh, 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 Casella Mio, for example, uh, in the second canto, or Cesare Mio, or Marco Mio, as we just saw in Purgatorio 16. Uh, so here we have that ironic uh, smile turned, uh, directed to Florence, uh, Fiorenza Mia. Uh, and the irony um, uh, continues to the next tour set where uh, the Florentines are um, accused uh, for the, their lack of the sense of justice, which they always have on their lips, but never exhibited in their actions. Um, the next uh, third set um, criticizes the Florentines' rush to the public offices, to accept public offices all the time, even when no one asks them, senza chiamare. Uh, they say, imiso barco, and Buti um, uh, uh, re, uh, explains uh, the meaning of the word so barco, io faccio di me barca, io mi piego a sopportarlo, a sofferirlo. So Dante subverts the sense of duty and sacrifice that is implied in so barcarsi to ironically point out the lack of care among Florentines for real responsibilities that come with public offices. Is all that matters to them is power, of course. Uh, the next uh, terzina is also played on the deep irony. Firenze is said to be ricca, con pace, con senno. Uh, instead of the first one, uh, ricca, that might be true because of their avarice and greed, the other two do not hold um, uh, in, um, uh, in the real world. And finally, the last uh, image of Florence as a sick woman who tosses and turns in her bed in an attempt to alleviate pain. Uh, and um, implying that if Florence and its citizens have even a little bit of clarity and memory left, they will recognize the more both state they're in and change their ways. And this image ties into uh, the, uh, that image of Roma that is vedova e sola from several uh, verses, several, several terzina before, um, uh, tying into the Lamentations, the first two verses from the Lamentations of uh, uh, Jeremiah um, uh, that uh, describe this desolate place once um, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the center of the world, uh, now um, uh, decrepit and um, uh, in the case of Rome and Florence, uh, and abandoned and without that power. And I'm going to stop here because it's already uh, uh, five o'clock Irish time, uh, but I, I hope that uh, this very brief and cursory overview of Purgatorio VI uh, has added one more dimension to uh, those great themes uh, that uh, Purgatorio rests on. Uh, and uh, that um, uh, I hope that we have completed uh, a little bit further, uh, come to the completion of that picture of what uh, Purgatorio is. Thank you very much, Professor Todorovic. It was really uh, great to, to see how you, you covered the, the question of, of uh, politics that uh, in, 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 in the general reading, uh, we don't, uh, intuitively, we don't connect politics to Purgatorio. But as you said, uh, but as you said, uh, history and theology, and you, you also show this, uh, it would be enough to, to, to remember the political theory of the two luminaries, no? uh, from, from the monarchia, no? that is really at the center of this canto. As you said, it's really the, the Purgatorio 16 is really the, center, not only from a, a not only the numerical center 
at this, the, the theatrical center of the, of the Divine Comedy. And in this canto, there are three elements that, he, that are, first of all, justice, no? Justice, Marco Lombardo talks about justice, uh, but there is no justice without free will, no? According to the Christian doctrine, no? So free will is really at the center of the Christian doctrine. And there is no free will without liberty, no? These are, are the three elements that are in, in, in that canto and that are, uh, uh, and you have, you have explained in your lecture, you know? So uh, uh, we can also say uh, that there is no, that there is no uh, liberty without responsibility, you know? And so Dante is also talking about this, you know, uh, in political terms, you know? And uh, so thank you very much for, this was really, enlightening from many uh, point of view. Ah, Renata privately, privately is, is telling me, can we talk about the number at the center? No, this was uh, a, an old idea uh, of Charles Singleton. No, this, this is one of the, the, the essays that began the tradition of uh, the, the studies of numerology in the, in the Divine Comedy. I don't know if, if Yerena wants to say something about this, but I, I remember that also Singleton talks about the the, the, the 50th canto, 50th canto of the Purgatory, mm -hmm. of, the, of the Divine Comedy. More than a number, well, uh, we express it in terms of numbers, but we were talking about the gravitational center of the entire commedia uh, that just happens to be at the center of, uh, at number 50, um, uh, which um, again uh, ties into numerology in various ways. But what is um, uh, important uh, from, uh, at least from my point of view, uh, to consider is exactly that the importance that Dante gives uh, to this topic uh, and the way in which he connects libero arbitrio to the presence and, and its full manifestation and its proper manifestation to the presence uh, of, um, of rules and laws that would be enforced um, uh, by, uh, by the, uh, the emperor. So tying that, as you said, uh, liberty and uh, libero arbitrio um, uh, to um, uh, um, uh, to the political, really, to uh, to the empire, and that is the part uh, uh, Purgatorio 16, where he talks about the theory of two sons, right, from the monarchia. Um, uh, that uh, is the question uh, at, um, um, at at the center of uh, his um, uh, not only. Uh, his political thought in this case, if we're talking about uh, the two sons, uh, the, the emperor and, um, uh, and the pope. Uh, so uh, from that point of view, yes, I think it is important to point out that this is, if we were uh, to take that uh, 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 manuscript of the Divine Comedy or in today's um, uh, modern editions, if we would take, if, if you would take Commedia uh, in one tome and you were to open it to Purgatorio 16, that would be uh, the, the, the center uh, of um, uh, the book, if you will. Uh, and uh, that, that is uh, what is, um, uh, what is important uh, because it, um, libero arbitrio and the liberty uh, that, that emanates from it and that uh, leads to it uh, is um, uh, is the central theme uh, for uh, for the entire realm and for the entire um, um, journey and the conception of of the afterlife okay i think that there is a question from uh, Gianluca about today's uh... Uh, today's lecture, this morning's this morning's lecture. I don't know if Gianluca. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I had a question about the origin and the position of purgatory, um, because as you mentioned, uh, the doctrine of purgatory was established in 1274 in the Second Council of Lyon, and before the before Dante, the representation of purgatory was not so different from the representation of the L. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, next year I will work on the possible influence of uh, the Navigatio Sancti Brendani or of medieval visions in general, especially Irish visions, on the representation of the other world in the Divine Comedy and on purgatory. Because as I know, uh, um, I read that the, the idea of the mountain that is located in the other side of the globe, mm -hmm. with the Eden on the top, comes from the Gloss Ordinaria, but I have to check the test. I just read an article about it. And so uh, I wanted to ask if you, if you have uh, some ideas about this question of a possible influence of the Irish myths or Navigati Santi Brendani, this idea of collocating the purgatory like be beyond the sea and to access it through navigation uh, that is um, uh, uh, something uh, that will first, uh, Dante will first describe in uh, Inferno 34 when he describes how hell was formed, right? So the earth that uh, escapes from, um, uh, uh, out of disgust, if you will, <laughs> from Lucifer, uh, will create the mountain of purgatory on, um, uh, on the other side. Uh, in the middle of the hemisphere of the uh, of the earth uh, of the water, pardon me, uh, opposite Jerusalem. Uh, but uh, I unfortunately don't have any thoughts on the influence of the uh, of any uh, Irish texts. Uh, and I have to say that I have spolverato il purgatorio for for this occasion, uh, but uh, have found um, uh, actually more questions that I was uh, than I was able to answer, uh, which normally happens every time you take this uh, any text uh, to read it anew. Um, uh, so, um, unfortunately, I can't give you uh, any uh, more precise answers, but as I continue to work on this, I, I, uh, I have your address and um, uh, we can be in touch about it. Thanks. Thank you very much. There is a question from Leila. Hi. Okay, my question is about free will once again. Uh, because, of course, free will, liberty are crucial themes in Purgatory. But I was thinking, uh, what about uh, the free will of the souls in Purgatory? Because they, of course, cannot uh, commit any sin once they're in Purgatory. However, it seems that their will <laughs> becomes completely free, completely pure, only at the end uh, um, of the mountain after they have purged all their scenes, uh, uh, like Stacius, the character demonstrates, also Dante when Virgil says, uh, Lib. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so um, I'm asking this question, especially um, with a reference to the holy representation in the Valletta dei Principi, because a lot of scholars think um, that. Uh, it is only uh, represented for Dante. But if the souls aren't completely, their, their will isn't perfect, maybe uh, the representation is, is also uh, for them. Thank you. And I'm afraid my question is going to disappoint, uh, my, my answer is going to disappoint you. <laughs> Uh, in that, um, uh, yes, you're right, the souls uh, uh, and their full, full free will be, will be realized once they have um, uh, um, uh, finished purging uh, and uh, expiating their sins. Um, and I think that this is one of those questions where I have um, learned how to accept the ambiguity uh, which is something as scholars, uh, we are not often, uh, in, and of course we want to have answers and we want to have definite answers, but this is one of the uh, questions uh, that um, I, I don't know if I've definitely come to terms with the idea that we or I will never know the answer, but that is uh, one of the questions uh, that has tested my humility as a scholar, <laughs> in a way, uh, to just be, at least for the time being, honest to myself, to my students, and to say, um, 
maybe we will never know unless we find uh, uh, texts uh, or sources that uh, will help us determine the answer one way or another. So I guess this is um, uh, this is one of those of those questions that uh, as of now. I am more comfortable than not saying um, uh, I, I, I can't tell. Hey, thank you very much, Yelena, also for this answer that from a methodological point of view is more important than uh, quoting a source or uh, an auctoritas. Uh, about Leila's um, question, well, what comes to my mind is that at the end of the the, the Purgatorio, just before Virgil disappears, Virgil before disappearing tells Dante, e corono e mitrio, no, now your uh, free will is right. So now the question is, is Dante's condition the same condition as the souls in Purgatorio? That's, that's, but if you consider that most likely as uh, uh, Professor Carai was pointing out yesterday, um, Dante the character, Dante the pilgrim, uh, improves throughout the, 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 the journey, the, the otherworldly journey. It is possible that this is also the condition of the souls. Now, this is something that, that should be explored. I'm sure there are studies on this, probably. Um, what, what is also interesting, and something that I also pointed out yesterday, when we talk about uh, it's 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 incorrect to talk about sinners in in, in purgatorio in the sense that uh, souls in purgatorio are already saved even if they were uh, sinners in in the earthly life. So this this means that they have to get rid of the memory of their own sins. And in fact, I really I really like that Professor uh, Todorovic mention Bonconte, Bonconte da Montefeltro. I think that Bonconte Montefeltro is a key figure to understand the entire Purgatorio as Dante did conceive it. Because we have to remember that uh, Bonconte da Montefeltro is the son of Guido da Montefeltro. Guido da Montefeltro is a genius of politics. He's, he's in Inferno 27. He's a genius of politics. Someone who has turned from politics to a, to a monastic life, to a perfect life, and then he was uh, led again to sin by Boniface VIII. It's clear that Dante wants to blame wants to, uh, Boniface VIII for being a corruptor, clearly, uh, and, and also want to point out the question of the indulgences, as, as Elena pointed out now, because uh, and and, and, uh, and uh, with the Montefeltri, who is a genius of politics, did not was not able to defend himself from the Pope, no, from this uh, trap of the Pope. And in fact, he ended up in Inferno. So, and in fact, these are two mirror cantos because Bonconte da Montefeltro did the 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 the, the opposite. So he 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 lived a completely secular life. And he turned to Mary, which means to God, only at the very end. These two cantos, most likely, uh, have been written by uh, Dante Ligieri to show that it's up to us, no? So it, we have the free will, so we can decide what our destiny will be in the afterlife. So, it's, as, as Elena pointed out, it's very difficult to say yes or no to such a question. And even if you provide so many, I think, um, um, auctoritates or sources, Thomas Aquinas, Augustine, we, we should look at, first of all, I would say to the liberal arbitrio by, by Augustine. And so, on. But even, I think that it's, the, 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 the answer is correct. It's an open question, no? Because it's an open question to us, no? How we and um, uh, thank you, Igor, for um, uh, 
pointing out that methodological question, speaking of methodology, and I see uh, among attendees today, future scholars who are now in training to become future scholars um, uh, of Dante, of Italian literature, um, and something I often say to my graduate students, um, that it is okay to have open questions. We, <laughs> we cannot always know everything, and uh, uh, the sooner we start training ourselves in that sort of a scholarly humility, I think, uh, the better it is. Um, and also talking about the, um, uh, our um, uh, methodology in approaching Dante's text, I do agree, Igor, uh, uh, with you, uh, that we shouldn't call purgatory or souls sinners, and I think I have sinned <laughs> of that. Uh, I have called them sinners uh, several times, and we tend to think of them as sinners in that they're formal sinners, but who have repented. Uh, but that that is important also to to bear in mind as we differentiate between uh, Dante the pilgrim and Dante the author. Um, uh, we should think in these very basic terms, right, uh, of, um, uh, of the background uh, of, uh, uh, of this story, of the building blocks uh, of the story. And um, uh, yes, instead of talking about purgatorial souls as sinners, maybe we should talk, talk about them as saved because they are saved. Uh, uh, after uh, some time, uh, they uh, they will officially join those uh, the, the saints in heaven. So, uh, the saved instead of instead of sinners. Thank you for for that. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Yela. I I I I was not actually referring to you because I think you you didn't use sinners. Or, oh no, or, 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 I, I might have. Oh, okay, I, no, I, but I if they recall, if they but I, I just thought that was a good spoon to okay. point out again to this methodological question uh, of uh, what we do and how subconsciously we have. Uh, and yeah, Teodolinda yeah. Barolini has talked about that sometimes. It is uh, salutary to disimparare, to unlearn a lot of, the, of those layers that from elementary Absolutely. school, high school and undergraduate studies, uh, all of those layers that are built one uh, upon the other to create these towers of new meanings and new uh, um, uh, um, uh, new knowledge, if you will, uh, and uh, I think it is very important also because of that to go back to the text and to see what the text is telling us. Uh, and one example uh, that often comes to mind when we talk about those layers of knowledge is Francesca from uh, Inferno 5, of course. Uh, and if you were to ask anyone today, tell me something about Francesca, they will tell you everything but what Dante writes about in Inferno 5 right because these are this is the received knowledge of francesca boccaccio story of francesca really uh that uh, everybody identifies with her and not necessarily her story as told by dante in inferno five but uh, I digress. thank you no no thank you very much because again this is so important from a methodological point of view also because we have seen particularly in dante's case that 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 uh, his text sometimes is used as a, etymologically speaking, as a pretext to say something else. No? Mm -hmm. It is very easy in some way, given this secular comment and all the scholarship to use to, to not to understand Dante's text. But there is a comment from uh, Cormac, please. Cormac. your microphone. Ah, okay, thank you. So thank you very much for a wonderful lecture. Um, my comment, uh, I have a comment uh, and another suggestion. Uh, the comment is about, are they still sinners? And I, I would turn to the, the rewriting of the Lord's Prayer, Padre um, Nostro Cheli Stai, in which Dante very humbly tries to improve on the original. And they end up with the, you know, do not lead us into temptation. But quest'ultima preghiera, signor caro, non si fa per noi che non bisogna, or words to that effect, ma per color che dietro a noi restaro, which I find one of, the most, one of the most affecting lines in the entire comedy, the solidarity with us 
poor fools who are still left here on earth. So I think, in fact, they are potential sinners because they would still have free will. However, la questione non si pone, uh, if I could quote from my cousin Vinny, it's a bullshit question, because, in fact, you have to be tempted and uh, there ain't going to be no temptation in purgatory, all the more so as you now know that you're on your way to heaven and for the first time in your life and death you have a proper appreciation of the advantages of that state. But I, 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 even having, say, having made that little argument, of course all of the big questions still remain open. I mean that's why they're the big questions. I, I, have, an, I, have, I have another, I wanted to bring up another point that you made about time passing uh, and it's it's a wonderful fact that, yeah, time does, does change and uh, progress is made and so on in the comedy. And that ties in with history and politics. But I have a horrible feeling that time is rushing uh, towards its end, which is the sort of destruction of everything. The cinque cento, dieci e cinque, the world, you know, uh, which is to, to, to blow up in a spark uh, from the dies irae. So that in a way, all the condemnations of this world all of the condemnations of politics. Uh, it, it, reminds us of our, it reminds me of, my, of our own time when you have people who condemn everything um, while, of course, uh, forgetting to condemn themselves and want to rush us towards some sort of silly apocalypse. So that to me is the, that, that, that aspect of time is, is very alarming when reading the Purgatorio, which ends up with apocalyptic visions of, uh, of sort of a sort of end of the world. Now it's nice for Dante at the end because he's escaping into heaven, but for the rest of us, che dietro a lui restiamo, uh, what hope is there? <laughs> um, wonderful observations. Thank you very much, especially this uh, uh, re for reminding us the time in its passing is also rushing toward the end. Uh, and um, uh, yes, to us who rest behind, that does not uh, really seem very encouraging. Um, uh, however, the the possibility offered by uh, uh, by what uh, Purgatorio offers and the concept of Purgatorio offers, uh, and that that hope with which um, uh, every uh, um, uh, Christian person in this in this moment lives uh, is um, uh, I guess um, that driving driving force. But I cannot now um, uh, th this image of uh, time rushing to its end is, has really overpowered me at this moment. <laughs> Thank you for for, for this beautiful oh. image. Um, uh, but um, yes, uh, what remains for us for left behind um, uh, is, um, uh, I guess, um, uh, we will see is the answer <laughs> uh, to that. <laughs> thank you very much. No, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cormac. I, I, I think that maybe my observation on, on, on the sinner <laughs> created some... No, I, no it, what, it is clear that, that these souls uh, were sinners, no? Because right. otherwise they would end up, would ended up in uh, um, Paradiso, clearly. And another thing that, another element that we should probably consider is the fact that like the, the, the moral examples that we, we see depicted in, in Purgatorio, even these souls that do know that they are already saved, and that's why I think that the question is more doctrinal, theological, on the uh, problem of the memory, what Dante calls the scoglio. No, these souls have to get rid of the scoglio, like like something that um, is a burden for them. No, and then they will be able to lift up to through uh, through the the spheres. No, in Paradiso, and then see go face to face at the very end. And in fact, the the, the question, I think that the the, the doctrine here that is so interesting for the Paradiso, but probably is already active in Purgatorio when the souls are climbing up the mountain. So at the beginning, it's very hard for them to climb up the mountain. Is the, in Augustinian terms, is the pondus amoris, you know? It's a weight of life, of love, you no? Know? So it's the opposite, when, when we explain this in class, it's the opposite of the gravity, you no? Know? The gravity tends to uh, take us down, 
no? And this pondus amoris is our desire to go back to the creator, is something that uh, uh, lifts us up no, to the creator. And this is clear in Paradiso, no? This is, it's been pointed out, I think, by John Frecero, uh, but maybe active in, pur in Purgatorio as well. So um, it is possible that, that, that they, the Dante, the character, first of all, with a pilgrim as well, uh, and uh, the reader, particularly, we don't have to forget the reader of the, of the Commedia, as to learn from the fact that these souls who know that they are already saved have to suffer. So are or where, it's, it, it, it doesn't, doesn't make a big difference, have, are, are or were sinners. Another thing that is very interesting about time passing, which is connected to this, to this strategy, of how the Divine Comedy is constructed, is the fact that we say, this is also our title, time does exist in Purgatorio differently from the other canticles. And this is certainly true for the souls that are respectively in Inferno, Purgatorio and Paradiso. But it is also true, and this is something that I think that should, uh, that needs more investigation from uh, the community of scholars, it is true that the time does exist for Dante the character in the three canticles, no? Because Inferno begins and ends for Dante the character, Purgatory as well, and Paradiso as well. This is one of the reasons why Dante keeps uh, saying that he's traveling with his own body. Because body means time. Body means that he's moving in time. Uh, I don't know uh, if there are other questions, comments uh, on the workshop, uh, the material covered in the workshop and in the lecture. No other. Uh, una domanda, Giulia Bonaldi. Prego. Hi, uh, thank you very much for the wonderful lecture. Uh, I have a question about the, the first part of the, the lecture, not the part of the morning lecture. Uh, I found a really interesting passage no, uh, in which you talked about uh, the passage of penance from being a public uh, performance no, to be a, a, a private performative act. No? And I talked about the, the role of tears in this process. No, the raw tears from the Aldimetta, of Von Conte to the tears of Dante, you know, at the, the very top of uh, Purgatorio at the end. And so, so, so uh, I, I wanted to ask you what you think about the, you know, the, the raw tears as an instrument of salvation and uh, repent, uh, redemption in Purgatorio and um, the difference between the raw tears in the Purgatorio and, and in, in the hell, in the inferno, where you know, actually uh, tears are uh, an instrument of punishment, and, uh, it, it, and maybe this the, the change, you know, this change could depend on, on time as well, from the the, the, you know, the, the, the from the existence of time in Purgatorio. Um, I have to say that um, uh, this the, the public performance of penance uh, and uh, what I read about it. Um, uh, for another work many years ago, um, I do not recall the role of tears and the importance of tears. What was important was that um, uh, the, the sinner repented by admitting publicly and uh, exhibiting publicly his or her uh, shame because of, uh, of their sins. Uh, once it becomes um, a, a private act um, um, around the time, uh, slightly before uh, the uh, uh, official the, uh, legitimization of, of purgatory, uh, then um, uh, it, it is a private matter between uh, now former sinner uh, and um, uh, and his or her priest uh, and God. Um, I'm not uh, sure that uh, tears is, uh, tears. It doesn't necessarily have uh, 
the singer doesn't necessarily have to exhibit any act of crying or tears. Uh, it is that contrition uh, that is implied in tears that matters here, and that contrition of the heart that might be expressed uh, as a tear uh, and might not be expressed as a tear. Tears also uh, function as um, uh, talking about inferno, uh, and, um, uh, as a manifestation of, comp of uh, compassion, for example, of Dante for, uh, for some of the sinners he encounters. Um, so, so tears, uh, I would see them more as a manifestation of different stati d'animo um, uh, within these uh, two realms uh, than, um, uh, than anything else. Even una lagrimetta uh, doesn't necessarily have to be una lagrimetta, right? Uh, it is, um, uh, what, what counts is what, uh, what leads to that um, uh, uh, tear. Um, I have to say that I haven't, uh, this is uh, from uh, just thinking on my feet on, on this question. I haven't uh, really uh, studied it in, uh, in detail, uh, but um, what, what um, I, I would say what is important more than that manifestation is uh, what is the significance of that uh, manifestation and what it comports. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I uh, don't know if there are other questions or comments. We still have time for one either question or comment. Okay. Uh, I think that there are no more question or comments. So. Uh, I would like to thank very much Professor Todorovic for uh, both this uh, enlightening lecture, introduction to the Purgatorio, and the uh, workshop that has covered so much, so many questions uh, on uh, the Purgatorio and Dante's Divine Comedy. And uh, as every um, really uh, school has opened, you know, uh, the field to, 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 to more questions has suggested more and more and more questions. So, and we are very, very thankful for this. Um, and we hope really to have you next time uh, with us in person in Dublin. No? Um, so, I don't know if Francesco wants to say something about, uh, and Renata, um, about tonight's event. Just to remind you that at 7.30 uh, Irish time, we have the Dante for Everyone Encounter, performing Purgatorial Encounters, a conversation with Hermanna Montanari, Marco Mantinelli, and Andrea Porcheddu, presented by Eduardo Camurri. On the, uh, school, on the website of the Dublin Dante Summer School, you can already find a um, movie by um, uh, Marco Martinelli and the reading by Hermana Montanari. This will be the starting point for the conversation that uh, will be held tonight. Renata? Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Todorovic. It's been a, really a pleasure to, to listen to you and to learn so much from the questions and the answers. And uh, I think it is a right conclusion to listen to an Italian voice uh, reading uh, Purgatorio 30th, uh, Hermana Montanari is in fact, uh, has graciously let us uh, um, use this reading of hers. So it is available on uh, the, on the webpage and it is in fact Beatrice telling Dante what to do and how to behave. And it is uh, very, very moving. And th there is also this very interesting film done in Africa, in Kibera, in Nigeria, and it is an interpretation of the whole divine comedy by Afri African kids. So it is something that really, you know, shows us how culture can move different perceptions and can probably make us understand our own culture better. So thank you. Thank you very much.